Introducing Daryl Lohr, candidate for County Commission District 4. Hello, I'm Daryl Lohr. I'm a candidate for County Commission District 4. I'm a lifelong uh, public servant for sure. Uh, many of you may recognize me from my days as a district commander of the Florida Highway Patrol uh, for 20 years, or maybe more importantly, as your three-term sheriff from 2009 till 2021. Uh, I'm 54 years of age and I began my career in law enforcement age 21. So basically my entire adult life have been committed to public service. That's what I stand for and I will continue to stand for that, particularly after August 23rd when I win the election. I want to be your next District 4 County Commissioner for a variety of things. One is, I love Indian River County with all of my heart, dedicated public servant to the county, raised my children in this county, have many, many friends in the commerce business as well uh, as in the service industry. We need good leadership with recent knowledge of what's going on in the county. My 12 years as the sheriff of Indian River County, obviously I was very, very uh, in touch with county government, uh, county budgets, county spending and the like. Um, my mission as a county commission is to bring strong leadership to this county commission board. We have some trying times coming up economically as well as potentially politically coming up in the next uh, 10 years or so. We have to have a leader that's ready with recent knowledge and relevancy to step into the District 4 county commission seat. Three biggest uh, challenges that I think Indian River County is facing is one, uh, we enter civilization. We have to have law and order, we have to have fire protection. Uh, that's, that starts the, the chain of events. If we don't have strong public safety and strong fire, what do we have at the end of the day? That's one thing as the sheriff uh, for 12 years, when I came in in the end of 2008, beginning of 2009, we were immediately faced with a recession. Uh, and I have a feeling uh, with the inflation, everybody knows what gas costs, a loaf of bread, hamburger, steak, etc., cetera, um, gasoline, petroleum, anything. So everybody knows what's going on currently with our inflationary status. History tells us that typically 12 to 14 months after the signs and symptoms of this inflationary uh, status, uh, then we come into a recessionary status. Uh, we have to be poised for that. We have to be uh, ready and future thinking and planning along the line. Although the economy may appear without valorum taxes, property taxes uh, coming in, uh, that things are going to be great, but we also have to have leadership that's been there and has done that and prepared. I led an agency of 544 individuals through a recession, through a recession in 09, 10, 11, and basically 12 with zero pay raises, zero capital purchases, no furloughs, we weren't, fortunately didn't have to do that. But at the end of the day, uh, the cohesiveness of that team of the 544 individuals stuck with me and, and we obviously prevailed uh, through that with success. So my number one priority is the public safety, uh, which is certainly uh, on top of the minds with everything that's going on in this nation. Uh, we see it every day on the nightly news uh, and it hurts my heart to see that. And you hear some pundits talking about defunding the police and all of those things, not in any River County. We've proven that in any River County and we're a strong county. And my mission as a District 4 County Commissioner is to can continue on that leadership mission and help the county thrive. So my first uh, concern, of course, is the public safety. My second uh, is making sure that Indian River County continues to thrive. Listen, we've had uh, 100, we have 165,000 people in our county. From the last census, which was from uh, 210 to 220, 2020, uh, we increased uh, 27,000 people. In fact, in the last two years of that census, which would have been 18 to 20, we gained 7,300 residents in our community. And we know that Florida is growing by uh, between 900 and 1,000 people a day, mainly from uh, the leadership that we have in the state of Florida uh, is an attractor. Uh, the pandemic, obviously, uh, COVID-19 was a huge issue for a lot of our friends in the Northeast to come down. But what we're seeing is uh, home sales 
are, are still uh, at staggering heights. Uh, but additionally, and simultaneously, we have seen uh, our tourism uh, increase rapidly. Vero is known now, we're on the map. In fact, our last quarterly TDC report uh, showed a significant increase, about 37% from January uh, 1 to March 31st of 2021 to this year, January 1 to March 30th, March 30th, 2022. In fact, that's a 37% increase, about $1.7 million. Uh, and that's bed tax, if you want to call it that, or tourism tax. Uh, and that is a tax, uh, four cents on every dollar, that simply uh, helps fuel our mission here, uh, particularly, uh, and very importantly, portions of those dollars help replace the sand on our beach. That's why people come to Vero Beach. Obviously, we support with our tourism tax, we support uh, chambers of commerce, wherever you are, Indian River, um, specifically Indian River, Vero or Sebastian. So that fuel is it's almost like an enterprise fund that, that works and it's a machine that the chamber can also utilize to recruit uh, not only businesses, uh, but in fact, our tourists that are coming down and we know they're coming down. Uh, we know that the room rates are up, uh, but we know that uh, the capacity is there. So one important thing that we have to get, again, kind of like my, my first answer, we have to be careful on hedging our bets. We have to make sure uh, and, and track and modify if we have to on the different techniques and, and challenges that we may have in the future, in the next four to eight years, what is that going to look like? What is that base going to look like? Uh, but as important, we've got to get um, sustainable jobs because of our 165,000 residents, uh, statistics tell us about 90,000 are retired. So that leaves the other 70,000 uh, primarily as our workforce. Uh, and what we often hear that this is a service industry uh, community, but I can tell you with the chamber's help, my relationship with the chamber going back 14 years, we have seen industries come in. We have a, an excellent team here, uh, not only with Helene Castletine that recruits uh, and, and maintains those large, strong businesses. Uh, and I think we have the room to do that and we'll continue to do that in Indian River County as I am your District 4 County Commissioner. So my third priority obviously uh, has to do uh, with the overall atmosphere of the county, particularly the lagoon. As many of you know, we have 22 miles of intercoastal. We have 22 miles of beautiful beach sand. Uh, but in addition to the cr very creative things that the county has already done uh, to help uh, less contaminate uh, the lagoon, there's some remarkable things going on. Everything from the Spoonbill Marsh uh, to the Egret Marsh to the Osprey Marsh. Furthermore, the state grants, in fact, last year was about a million dollar grant from the state of Florida where we began uh, getting our residents off of septic tanks. We know as Floridians that septic tanks have been around for decades. In fact, years ago, sometimes it would just be uh, some concrete blocks dug under the ground with your, with your sewage running into it. Those, those times have changed. There's been a big push, particularly in Sebastian, uh, with our state dollars uh, to convert um, from septic tank to the county's line, which is, which is huge, particularly alongside of the lagoon. Additionally, we have water storage throughout our county. You know, our county is 543 square miles. That's a large county. Our urban service boundary line, generally speaking, goes to I-95. But I can tell you, friends, that we have a lot of land west of town. Now, we will be monitoring that growth simultaneously with our condition of our lagoon. At the end of the day, what is the engine that drives people to our community? Well, it's our lagoon and our beaches, as, as mentioned earlier. But we have to continue to get uh, the seagrass growing again. Uh, there's a lot of innovative ways to do that. In fact, in Sebastian most recently, there's some oyster beds that they've planted. And we're beginning to see some seagrass return. The issue and the primary issue with the lagoon is that the muck that's in it uh, and that muck that has been in it for decades uh, has damaged our seagrass. Our sunlight can't get in to help the, uh, help the grass foster. So. Overall, when you think about the three things, our public safety is enormous. Taking care of our county employees is enormous. Uh, at the sheriff's office years ago, uh, I had a situation with retention and recruiting. And uh, like county employees, not only uh, downtown at the county building, but any type of county employee you can think of, uh, 
they oftentimes are pursuing other things, other things in the private sector. So we've got to work with that. We've got to stabilize uh, the retention and the recruiting through all over the state, through all over the county. In fact, at the sheriff's office, I was able to do that by uh, creatively uh, getting the salaries up. And that led to uh, a, a better morale, a better uh, recruiting policy, but most importantly, a, a good retention. So uh, that's my three priorities. Um, I hope you, you found this uh, enlightening. August 23rd, anyone in the county can vote, regardless of your uh, party affiliation. Uh, it's an open race. Uh, and I would appreciate your vote on August 23rd. Thank you.